everybody doing today? I am so excited to be here with you guys this morning. Um, happy May, guys. We've almost made it to halfway through the year. Isn't that crazy? I mean, time is just flying by. But God has just been so faithful. He has just been so good to us. Um, today, as I was getting ready, I was just thinking, what is... What is my favorite attribute about God? Is it, you know, his love obviously is one. Is it his faithfulness? Is it his, his power? Is it his mercy? And I want you guys right now to just to begin to type in the chat, what is your favorite attribute about God? Personally, mine is his faithfulness. I just think, what are the promises of God if he's not faithful to perform them? You know, if he can't be counted on, if he can't be depended on, what is the point of me believing that he is a rock or that he is my healer or that he is my friend or that he is an ever-present help if he is not faithful, if I can't count on him to be there for me every time. And so just go ahead, just write your favorite attribute about God and I want you to think about that today when we praise him, when we worship him.
be lifted. We put you at the center of our hearts today. God, if we have put anything before you, we apologize and we recalibrate our hearts, Lord God. Take honor, Lord, in our worship. Take honor in our praise. Because ultimately, Lord God, it all belongs to you. If inanimate creation can praise you, who are we to withhold our praise? Who are we to withhold our worship? When your mercies are new every morning, who are we to withhold our praise? Take on a
Hello, hi, my name is Toby O'Reilly, and welcome to Light London's page, where I want to discuss with you the prophetic word that the Spirit of God laid upon my heart regarding the year 2021 as we see it. Before I start this word, I'd like to begin by prefacing that whenever God gives a word, He requires that His people don't just stand back as we predict the future, but we put the heat of prayer and intercession as God is revealing His will, exposing the enemy's will, and also overcoming and avoiding some things that He may not need want to happen. Prophetic words are given to us for direction. Prophetic words are given to us for warning. Prophetic words are also given to us for clarity. But one of the things that I have to emphasize is prophetic words are not given to us for certainty. We cannot journey with God and make an idol of certainty. And this is something that I'll make abundantly clear through the word. We already have the video of last year's prophetic word and how the Spirit of God was already revealing to me some interesting advancements and things that were going to take place. How we had just shaken a snake into the fire and how uh, uh, we, we were going to see that people would call the, the UK a nation, a racist nation. In a prophetic word that I gave to the prophetic council for Europe, I spoke about a vaccine race, not fully knowing the things that the Spirit of God was touching with regards to even COVID-19. It wasn't heard of at the time. And yet we started to see how nations are run together to produce a vaccine and how in record time the vaccine has been produced. It is not my will to cajole God, nor to say that I have the entire counsel of God's revelation. But as I combine what God has given me with prophetic voices around the world, including you who are watching today, I believe that God would form a picture from each of our broken pieces, a true mosaic of the fullness of what he's saying. The Bible says we know in part and we prophesy in part. So it's my job today to give you the part God's given me and not to go outside of what God has revealed to me. But as I've been laboring and pressing in and feeling uh, the contention, and there's no other way I can describe it, but contention in the realm of the Spirit, I've been asking God for deep clarity concerning the things that He's giving us uh, to, today and how we advance and move forward. The first thing that the Spirit of God revealed to me was confusion coming from the enemy. And this was something that was laid upon my spirit very heavily, that the enemy had yelled over the world, over the United Kingdom, confusion, 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 because his assignment was very simple. It was divide and conquer tribalism rising in a new way, confusion rising in a new way. The enemy had said, if I kick up the dust, they would not be able to see with clarity. And can I just say something? When God starts a prophetic word, often by revealing what the enemy wants to do, it often is because he's exposing also in that what he plans on doing. If the enemy is bringing a, a rising of confusion in such a way, and I want to tell you why God started with this term, because God highlighted the scripture to me that says, he who observes the wind will not sow. If we keep on looking at the various confusions that the enemy is causing to uprise at this time, then we will not take the necessary risks that God is calling us to take in this season and certainly more on the term risk in in a moment but i saw how the enemy was stirring up a spirit of confusion and he was doing it by saying that this will be a year of mixed signals that you will hear news saying at one point it is well here and you will flip the channel and see it is not well in another way and this is going beyond the polar uh, the 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 polarizations of right versus left this was a further disintegration into a spirit of tribalism that was inciting an unusual level of violence and uprising almost as though the enemy was inciting revolution on a mass uh, scale but the motive of revolution was not pure and so i saw how there would be mixed signals 
with governments working together with major media outlets to propagate messages to push their vantage point and how the gullible middle, the people uh, who just want to get by and live an ordinary life were being slapped from pillar to post. And the Spirit of God yelled in my spirit, this will not be a year for the passive. This will not be a good year for the victim. This will not be a good year for those who are waiting for a light to shine in the morning or waiting for things to suddenly get better. That this was not the time for that. That certainly what I saw happening if for, uh, for those of us who are not partnering with the enemy in fear, certainly what I saw happening for those who are partnering with the enemy, I saw a time of great confusion. I saw how men began to say suicide rates have gone through the roof. Depression is at an all-time high. Divorce is at an all-time high. And we, start to, we started to see these things, but I saw how they were surging in this, new, in this next season. But the enemy had caused a kick-up of a voice of fear. And I have to touch down on that point because it was not just that things seem to be getting worse, or as people say, out of the uh, frying pan into the fire. It was deeper than that. It was as if media was throwing more petrol on the fire that needed to be there. And the Spirit of God said, beware that you do not over-exaggerate. Beware that you do not overreact in the midst of over exaggerations that we're seeing right now in the world because certainly there will be those who will overreact in the season and be caught out as said the spirit of god to me i saw even in the time of these mixed signals there were those who were saying a time of change has come it's a time of hope i saw certain governments particularly in the u.s chanting time of hope and time of a great change that was being uh, surged and brought up. But I also saw how there will be those in certain governments, allies and deep ties that were broken. Then I saw the Spirit of God hovering over the word special relationship because I saw how the special relationship between the United States and the United Kingdom was beginning to be questioned again as people started to wonder, is there any more a special relationship? I saw how ties that were forged were suddenly being broken. I saw how the United States was seeking uh, greater uh, uh, relationships with France and with Germany. And I saw these alliances taking place in such a way that it was to isolate the United Kingdom and to force us to be those who regretted the decisions that were made on the day that we chose to Brexit. Now, whatever your political opinion is with regards to Brexit, I don't feel like this is the point that the Spirit of God is raising at this time. What I do feel the point is, is that we are not those who are going to observe the exaggerations brought about by media as it's weaponized as a tool of fear and confusion, but we are going to be those instead who partner with the Holy Spirit to see great change. I saw uh, uh, something, and I have to tell you, the Spirit of God has put America in my spirit, uh, um, Africa in my spirit, and Europe in my spirit as well. Certainly, he started to touch on the Middle East, but I saw how America had grown as a hot pot of violence in certain areas. Further cracks were being revealed, division in a great way. There was a pointing of the finger. It was the right, one would say. No, it was the politically left, uh, the other would say. And I saw upheavals and scandals becoming rampart. I also saw how uh, there were uh, headlines 
for um, for a revelation of certain things that were hidden, court cases that were suddenly emerging uh, to the forefront. Because God was saying, I am still in the business of exposing. And the Lord says, where the enemy is overplaying his hand right now, the Spirit of God says, I will reveal it for what it is. It will be an overplay. And the Lord says, it will be a revelation of his agents. And the Lord says, they will be rounded up and locked up says the Spirit of God because the Lord says the times demand the justice can no longer lay in the streets says the Spirit of God when there had been such a time of injustice I saw for America how reform in the prison system was going to continue to be the order of the day and there was going to be a breath of God even where the enemy had brought about a wrong uh, in the area of social justice there was going to be a breath of God in the area of justice. But the Lord says compassion would be overplayed in the midst of it. And the Spirit of God says that there will be those who should not be released, says the Lord, who were, wrong, who were wrongfully released for political gain and advantage and not, says the Lord, for righteous means and righteous justice. And the Spirit of God says, but I want to draw a line in the sand this year, says the Spirit of God, between that which is righteous justice, says the Lord, and that which is just political, politically uh, motivated, and uh, motivated by Jezebel's need to gain a stronger hold, says the Spirit of God, upon the nations. I saw how America was pioneering in a new way in uh, drug uh, advancements and rehabilitation. In fact, this seems to be a global phenomenon. I started to see breakthrough in the era of Alzheimer's, sickle cell anemia, cancer, uh, and things of that nature. Men uh, began to discuss that if we'd move this quick on the vaccine, what is possible if we put our focus to it? Suddenly there were think tanks created for the combating of diseases that we have not seen. There was almost a front line developed against disease and future prevention of, of, of viral attacks. I saw at this time for the United Kingdom, the Spirit of God says, this is not the time. And I saw a vision, and please don't think that I'm relating to the breakup between the EU or, or, or UK as some divorce. But I saw how uh, uh, there was a child or children crying because their parents had seemed uh, to split up, just that the relationship was changing. And the Spirit of God says this is also not the time to partner with, uh, with woe is me and I wish I hadn't or regret, which seemed to be the headline of the day. Regrets rise as Brits uh, seem to regret moving forward uh, with, uh, with uh, uh, the plan uh, of, a, of a British project. The Spirit of God says this was not the time to partner with a spirit of regret or grief. This was not the time to be like the children of Israel who said, Oh, in Egypt, at least we had. Oh, in Egypt, at least we had that. Nor was this the time to build our gold calves and start talking about the movement and the restructuring of leadership. But the Spirit of God said, even in a time where labor would play their hand, and where it would, it would seem that there would be a grab for more control or more power. The Spirit of God said this was instead the time to keep the heat of prayer because the Lord says it was not his intention that the legacy of this administration, says the Spirit of God, despite your political views, would be merely COVID fighting and Brexit but that God would see the restoration of manufacturing and innovations back to the UK and the strong allegiances between the UK and its old allies. Uh, I literally saw the Spirit of God breathing again on the Commonwealth. I saw how God was importing and working with uh, uh, nations like India for the specialization of skills and various things of that nature. But the Lord says, I'm calling for a brave new type of opportunist in this season and in this time. And the Lord says that they cannot uh, be those 
who would be afraid. And so Allah says, this is a time where the British spirit is rising again. For men will again talk of the resurgence of the British spirit. I even began to see in the corridors of power how men were reminding us of the spirit of British, uh, Britain or what it means to possess this, a British spirit. But I saw rising with this righteous spirit another vine trying to wrap itself around what God was trying to do. And it was a national spirit of racism that just said, this is our time, this is our opportune time to move uh, in the midst of it. And the Lord says it was coming in a way that it was trying to merge itself, much like two separate paints congealing together. It was trying to merge itself and hijack something that God was growing that was righteous. That vision of the British spirit, the Lord says, will be clarified and it will be refined, but it must also divorce itself from that, says the Lord, which seeks to tag it to a race or a cultural uh, group. But the Lord says, Britain, you have changed and you will never uh, be the same. But the Lord says, your spirit is still burning. And I saw how there were glowing embers that the Lord began to fan again and remind Britain of her conquest in the past, even when her back was against the wall and how God had used her as a nation of justice and righteousness and that God was still redeeming and revealing this value in Britain again. I saw talks of another Great Depression, unemployment, riots in the streets, police holding uh, she uh, shields, talking of de-escalation de uh, at this time. I saw uh, how the poor were saying, just like with Grenfell, you need to fix this, there must be uh, justice. And the Spirit of God says, truly, I'm breathing on these things. And the Lord says, the, the uprisings are not to stir or trouble the heart. But the Lord says, my spirit doesn't just move in revival. The Lord says, my spirit can move in the midst of a riot also. And the Lord says, uh, can bring about justice where the enemy was seeking to hijack with his own agenda. Water, so powerful, but yet so calm. And sometimes that's how God meets us, in the middle of a storm, in a peaceful state. But sometimes, during the difficult times, he'll call you out into the deep. Will you sink? have to swim but he's with you waiting to see if you'll step out water so powerful but yet so calm. And sometimes that's how God meets us, in the middle of a storm, in a peaceful state. But sometimes, during the difficult times, he'll call you out into the deep. Will you sink, have to swim, but he's with you, waiting to see if you'll step out. Water, so powerful, but yet so calm. And sometimes that's how God meets us, in the middle of a storm, in a peaceful state. But sometimes, during the difficult times, he'll call you out into the deep. 
Will you sink, have to swim? But he's with you. Waiting to see if you'll step out. Sometimes that's how God meets us. In the middle of a storm, in a peaceful state. But sometimes, during the difficult times, he'll call you out into the deep. Will you sink, have to swim? But he's with you, waiting to see if you'll step out. Well, good morning, Light London. A big God bless you. Why don't we begin with uh, prayer and begin with asking the Lord to do what only he can do. And I'm sensing something strong in the atmosphere why don't we just lift our hands where we are and pray in the Holy Spirit. I feel a wind blowing. I feel the winds of the Spirit stirring in the atmosphere. Why don't we open our mouths and pray in the spirit? Lick up Rosumpera. Lick up Rosumpera. For the enemy has said he will send the wind. But the Lord's wind is greater. Greater is he that is within us than he that is in the world. Lick up Baba. For the Lord is saying a storm is coming. Roko Baba Yen de la Baba. But it will not be stronger than my voice. Lick up Rosumpera. A confusion from the enemy. But I will overturn it. For I will send my greater wind. And we will see who is really God. For I am separating between those who are mine and those who are not. Deep is calling to deep. Rocco 
Shalomaha. And so let your yes be deeper. Let your yes be deeper. Ligamore memeya. Barukusuna mandi ligamore meme. Let your yes be deeper. Ligabrusura mamandi ligamore bababa. Ligabomusuna la kababu yore memehida. Ruda la kabrusuna la kababa. Haligam rusiana. Rukoprien somni esono. Let your yes be deeper. Roko babo yenda la kabrusuna la kababa. Let your yes be deeper. Only then will you build the capacity to say no. Let your yes be deeper. I'll go where you lead me. I'll go where you lead me. I'll follow. Even in the uncomfortable places, I'll follow. Yes, over my days. Yes, over my prayer life. Yes, over my Monday, over my Tuesday, over my Wednesday, over my Thursday, my Friday, my Saturday, and my Sunday. Yes, over my time. I say yes to you. Sanctify me. I give you more of myself. Consume me. Consume me. Take over. Don't let me be like those whose lives go into the pit. Consume. Separate me. Separate me. Rukore me mahaya. Oh, Rabba Baye. Mandulu kubriyenga na 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 ma. Remove wickedness far from me. Lika prosuna maha. Marige moruko zuna la kabama. Mendeli onso mne isa. Lemro usi haganda la kaboru kudele kababa. Mori me me ya dalige nomra hasia. Oshe marige mora ma. We wash our hands, we wash our feet. We wash our hearts before you. In your blood we wash, in your blood we bathe. In your blood we bathe. Nebelicanore, Ramandandore, Bebekila, Lacababa, Rura Mamaya, Rure me ida legenomri is Suzurama, Hibolege Marian Zobre is of Rode, Nina Namur, Memaca, Ligabrosuna Rimini and Gurmahan, the Ligabro Rebebe. There is Zura Baba.
Um, amen. I just feel a, a warning from the Lord on something, uh, and I believe somebody's watching and do with it what you will, this warning. But it comes to you from 2 Samuel 16, verse 5. It says, as King David approached Be uh, Be Behurim, a man from the same clan as Saul's family came out from there. His name was Shimei, son of Gera. He cursed as he came out. He pelted David and all his officials with stones, though all the troops and the special guard were on David's right and left. This man named Shimei was in David's downtime. He was pelting David with stones and he was cursing him with stones. Um, David's men wanted to kill Shimei and run after him. And I felt to warn someone because David's men, uh, David held his men back and said, maybe the Lord has appointed him to speak against me in this way uh, because of what he had done. And uh, later on, when David was restored, he said, don't forget to visit the house of Shimei with the sword. And I believe that what goes around comes around. Or what, you're, what you sow, you're about to reap. I really believe you're watching today. And that there is a, there is a curse upon Shimmai's in this season. And this is the time to intercede. It's the time to pray. We're in the days, as I was prophesying at the beginning of this year, we're in the days of God's judgment. And in those days, God is exposing. And I truly believe that we are just beginning to see the beginnings of it. And I believe that people are going to run out and say it's well again. It's well again. But I, I, I'm not one for brimstone and fire or any of those things but I'm still uh, I still believe that there are far more shakings that are coming than just COVID-19 but we're about to see some of the offspring of COVID-19 some of what it that that had released on the earth particularly in the financial realm and with job losses and things of that nature and God is still in the business right now of exposing and lifting the skirt on injustice and sometimes we say well God why are you doing it are you just doing it for fun well I want you to know the reason why God's doing it because there's a great and marvelous outpouring coming and oftentimes when when these things start to happen when men are finally humbled they cry out to God again they cry out to God in the midst of what we don't realize is poverty is a test but prosperity is a harder test and in our days of prosperity, in our days where, where there's so much abundance in the earth, there's a, there's a real release of God's heart that says, have you forgotten me, your first love? Have you said we're rich now? We have need of nothing. We don't have need of you. And it's at the time, I remember just 9-11, uh, a couple of years ago now, maybe over 10 years ago now, 9-11 uh, happened. And at that time when 9-11 happened, just about everybody had filled the churches. People were crying out to God. I remember when COVID-19 began, suddenly online church boomed and people were coming to the Lord. Why? Because suddenly when your gods are destabilized and your idols are destabilized, there's a heart cry that gets restored back to God. And, and I, I, this is, this is part, in part what I want to deal with today. I want to talk with us all today about overcoming disappointment. This, uh, this area called disappointment and what it does to us, what it does to our hearts, what it does to our lives. I want to start off by thanking the team who is here with me who, uh, and the team who travel every single week uh, to, to do everything from worship to uh, mixing to filming to everything that goes on. Uh, you are so appreciated and may God visit you with tremendous blessing. Um, I want to... Uh, 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 deal with today, overcoming and dealing with disappointment, we are still on leading and bleeding see as a series. I truly believe that the weapon against the enemy is going to be vulnerability. The, one of the biggest weapons that we're going to be able to utilize as the body of Christ to overcome the enemy is going to be in areas of our own vulnerabilities. So today I want to deal with uh, this particular area called disappointment. If we can all turn in our Bibles through the book of Proverbs, Proverbs um, um, 13, um, Uh, Proverbs 13, uh, verse 12, <clears throat> it's, a, it's a crucial verse um, 
and it says this, Proverbs 13, verse 12, says, hope deferred makes the heart sick. Hope deferred makes the heart sick, but a longing fulfilled is a tree of life. Hope deferred makes the heart sick, but a longing fulfilled is a tree of life. Um, the reason I want to deal with disappointment is because in the there's an area of science called decision analysis. And decision analysis um, shows that the majority of our decisions that we make are made from our experiences. Um, the late Miles Moreau dropped something in my spirit this week as I was listening in the car to one of his messages. And it was so powerful what he said. A lot of us have been trained in a school of thought that is unbiblical. And the school of thought a lot of us have been trained in is this, that uh, um, experience is the best teacher. Experience is the best teacher. It's a school of thought that a lot of us have been trained in. So when we want to make a future decision, a lot of us will reach into our past experience to assess on the basis of our past experience whether we should make the present decision. The issue is the seasons and the circumstances may be different. And the issue is here, a lot of people believe you learn wisdom from your experience. So they say, well, I'm only going to listen to the old. We read about a young man called Elihu in the scripture, who when Job and the older men were arguing, Elihu sat back and he said, maybe I should sit back because I thought wisdom belongs to the aged. Let those who have experience talk. But now I can see that God himself gives us wisdom. And so um a lot of us believe or we're brought up in the school of thought that experience is the best teacher. And because I've been through this before, I know what to do in this, in this particular circumstance. The issue with your experiences, some of your experiences may have just been bad experiences and, they, and, and not necessarily the, the determinant of your future. Plus, if, if God determined your future based on your past, many of you would not be here today. If God determined, if God was to determine how he was going to deal with you now based off of your experiences and based off of who you are in your own life, I can honestly tell you, myself included, God would not be dealing with us now. Experience is not the best determinant of future decisions. Experience is not the best determinant of what I do next. And yet, I, and I'm going to probably go for the juggler in this message today, Yet the enemy will often use disappointment to discourage us. What do I mean? Disappointment because to live today, I need courage. Why? Because I've never seen today before. Regardless of my experience, I've never seen today before. And the problem is, if, if, if disappointment dis disarms me and leads me... Oh, hello, Dr. Sharon. I agree, experience does not necessarily bring wisdom. Oh, thank, hello, Dr. Oh, now I'm nervous. <laughs> Great, okay. And if I use, I was listening to a message today, so I'm going to steal points from her message on um, no, saying no. I, if you haven't listened to that message, you need to run and listen to that message. It was so powerful. Um, how to say no. One of, the, one of the things that while I was listening to that the Spirit of God really ministered to me when I was listening to it is your ability to say yes to God builds your capacity to say no to the enemy. The more we say yes to God, the more we have the capacity to say no to what the enemy is offering us. And this is, this is something that I've been working on in my own spirit, just saying yes to God more and more and saying, God, take more of me. But hope deferred makes the heart sick. If we don't learn to deal in the air of disappointment and 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 yet i'm i'm if, if we if we use our disappointment to, as a determinant of what i'm going to do next what i'm going to do now the problem is i've never seen today before and so discouragement will disarm me discouragement will undermine my faith that's really needed to function in what i'm going to do right now and so if I use my story, my past story to determine, now there's, there's elements of our story that we should utilize. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go into that. There's elements of our experience that is 
is true. There are solid truths and solid facts. Like if I touch fire, I don't need another experience of touching fire to not know that touching fire is not the best decision to make. Do you understand what I'm saying? But there are some decisions so lucid, some circumstances so tangible, uh, sorry, so um, subject to change that I cannot use yesterday's experience as a determinant of what I do, what I do now, what I do next. And so if we rely on history to determine our destiny and to determine the future, then uh, that story of the past may undermine what we need to do and how we need to function today. Hope deferred, the scripture says, makes the heart sick. And it was so important when I saw that because our lives are lived from our hearts. And the problem is if you live your life from history, you will, you will live a recycled life. That's pretty much the life you're going to live. It's going to look like, what's, what's, to, what's the next 10 years going to look like? The last 10 years. If you plan on living a life based off of history. The other thing is you will be imprisoned in fear if you live your life uh, from that place. And it amazes me how many believers have learned to disguise their fear like faith. Or let me put it like this, disguise their fear like wisdom. A lot of believers I've, I've noted have disguised this area of fear like wisdom. It takes faith to live in, in today. It takes faith to see uh, the new things that God wants to implement in my, in my life today. And so what if the enemy armed, uh, armed himself, and I want to go for the juggler here, if the enemy had worked over time to make sure that we were di disappointed, hear this, the enemy, what if, and this is what God told me this morning, what if the enemy worked over time to make sure that you are disappointed so that somebody else misses their appointment because you are their appointment? This hit me so heavy. What if, you see, the reason why we take disappointment so personally is because each one of us is God's clock, a scheduled time for us to harvest, a scheduled time in each one of our lives to manifest. What if disappointment was really God's way of showing you that you are the appointment that needs to be here? I love something that Jesus said in John chapter 4. He meets a woman at a well and he says to her, woman, the time is coming. Hear this. The time is coming and now is. What was he saying? The time is on its way, but because I'm here, it is. The time is coming, and while you're looking at me, it is. Each one of us is, 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 a, is a mover of time. A lot of us are, are, God, when are you coming back? When are you coming back? Look at this. The scripture actually says each one of us hasten his coming. Each one of us is God's scheduled appointment. So when we're dealing with the area of disappointment, what if God is trying to show you that you are the appointment? This was what, this was the, 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 the avenue, the unusual direction that God was taking me through. And I want to, I want to explain it from a bit of my own uh, perspective. This week I had a, a radical uh, supernatural thing happen to me uh, that I, uh, I mean, I was just, I went to sleep. I had a little bit of a discouraging uh, day that day. Um, I wasn't particularly feeling spiritual or deep or anything like that. I go to sleep and in my dream, I'm with my brother. It's our birthday, but we were disappointed on our birthday. We were just like, oh, and if you know anything about my birthday, my birthday was really kind of a sucky day. And so it ended up good in the evening, actually. It, it turned around, my, um, but it, it started off with a bit of a, a Monday. And I remember having the same feeling in this um, experience experience in the dream. I'm with my brother and we're really sad and just, uh, just discouraged. And, but we're, we're trying to encourage each other and, and speak encouraging words. Then my brother, I said, I need to walk home. Will you walk me home? Because it was kind of dark at night. But then I realized, no, if you walk me home, you have to walk back by yourself. So I said to my brother, stay here, stay here. You just stay here. And I went, to a, I went into a field and there's a worship leader that I know. We, 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 we follow each other on Instagram, but she was one of my heroes growing up. Um, Martha Munizzi, a lot of people may know her, may not know her, but she was one of my uh, um, uh, heroes growing up. And, and she began, she was in the field with me. I decided to sit down in the field in the dark and she starts to sing the song by Alexander Burke. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You know, the hallelujah song. She sing it and she, and then my brother, you know, he's a bit of a jester. Um, he starts touching my eyes and calling me moist because he's like, you're crying, aren't you? You're crying, aren't you? And he's touching my eyes to see if I'm crying. I said, no, I'm not crying. 
And she's singing this song, hallelujah, hallelujah. And she's singing it and it's getting so loud that I realize that I'm dreaming. And I can hear it in the room now. So I, I decide to wake up and think, who's playing it? Because I know I don't have it on my playlist. I, I know my wife doesn't have it. But now I'm awake, it's playing out loud in the room. Uh, so I was like, oh, cool, that's really neat. Maybe, maybe my phone, I figured in my brain, maybe my phone had tripped. Somebody had tripped over the keys and typed Alexander Burke somehow and played it. L literally, that was my train of thought. So I'm leaning because the noise is coming from my phone on the floor by my bedside. So I decide to lean over my bedside and just listen to the music. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And it's singing this worshipful music um, uh, and by who I think is uh, Alexander Burke. So I thought, maybe I left my phone off. Maybe I woke up in the night and just typed the words. I, re I just reasoned whatever in my mind that was logical. So then as I'm listening to this song, I'm crying while I'm, now I'm awake. I'm not in the dream. I'm crying. The song's in the room so loud. I'm like, hallelujah. And it would not stop. So I grabbed my phone to stop it and nothing was playing the music. <laughs> Literally nothing was playing the music. And I woke my wife up and said, Babe, babe, wake up. <laughs> I said, wake up. Where's that music come from? Where's the music come from? And we couldn't find it on any device in the house. And then I realized it was the Lord singing in the room and there were angels singing in the, in the room when I woke up. And I heard the, the Spirit of God say, these are the days to encourage yourself with the hallelujah. These are the days to encourage yourself with the sound of the song. Because I heard the Spirit of God say, we are coming into dark times and dark days. But there was something about the hallelujah of God. There was something about that song. There was something about that worship. There was something about in the midst of discouragement, not embodying the disappointment, not becoming the disappointment because I saw as the body of Christ was embodying disappointment, our clocks were changing. Our expectations were adjusting. And as this clock was adjusted, it adjusted this person's clock because you were meant to intercept this person's life at a certain time. But because the enemy had adjusted your clock with disappointment, appointment when you met this person they never came into their appointment and I love it because it the Lord began to remind me of how he dealt with Mordecai in the place of this sorry with Esther in the place of disappointment Mordecai came to tell her and reset her clock and say stop engaging in this disappointment stop embodying the place of disappointment perhaps God has raised you for such a hear this time as this. That means each one of us are God's time. And what the enemy will do if we're not careful is he will speak to us. And when he's speaking to us, he's resetting our clock. He's changing our appointment. And because he's changing our appointment, someone else misses their time because he's resetting your clock. What if it's God's time for you to be prosperous, but because of the last business venture you entered into, you were disappointed. So you're not entering into the places of risk that God's called you to. And if you don't enter into this place of risk. You will not acquire the wealth to buy the stadium when the revival hits. And because of this disappointment, we miss our appointment. What if all of us are missing our time because you're disappointed in the place of prayer, because you've left the, and abdicated the place of intercession and birthing? What if you were at the point of birthing and because you did not pray revivalist, because you abdicated the call of God for your life, a whole room of people who were meant to come into the revival of God miss their place because you missed your appointment time. T disappointment is satanic technology utilized to reset your clock because the enemy knows if he resets you, he's reset others. If he changes you, he changes others. So, so the encouragement comes from the Lord to reset your own clock. How do we reset our clock? I'm going for the juggler instead of going uh, around the bend in the way I wanted to go today. How do we reset our own clock? How do we manage and deal in this area of disappointment because I saw the enemy rewriting stories. Here was God's prophecy and here is the enemy's lie. Here is what God said concerning you about the timings and the instructions and the order of your life. And the enemy said, I'm not going to delete the story. I'm just going to pervert the story. I'm just going to write my own story. I'm just going to put something in there. Well, Genesis 1 opens up with a God who sees a disappointing state to the earth. He sees a state to 
to the earth that is not functioning in its appointed role. In 1 verse 1, it is appointed. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And then verse 2 says, and the earth became. The, the word in Hebrew is not, and the earth is void or was void. It says in between verse 1 and verse 2, the Hebrew word is, and the word earth became tohu and bohu, destroyed, void, empty. This word uh, tohu and bohu denotes confusion. This word tohu and bohu denotes darkness and emptiness and void. This was a disappointing state. It wasn't the one verse one state that God had appointed and God had decreed. This was a destroyed, this was a depleted state that the earth was in. And then God, then God said, that's how the Bible opened up. Then God said, then God spoke. And what I want to uh, teach you strongly today is that part of you made in the image and likeness of God is to reset disappointment and to turn them back into God's appointment. Part of you, uh, because at this time of disappointment, the enemy is going to work over time to change the way you speak because he knows if you speak a certain way, you are setting the clock further and further away from where God desires for the for his appointment to go. You see, your life goes in the direction of your mouth. The first thing that we see God's doing is he's, he's showing us technology is only catching up with God. All this Amazon and Alexa is only catching up with God. God revealed before time was that the earth is voice activated. Before there was ever anything that we speak to, any technology that we talk to, God revealed before time ever existed that the world and the universe around us is voice activated saying in Hebrews 11 by faith we understand that the worlds were created by the word of God I love this so much because if you learn the power of your words you can change even God's mind my goodness if you learn that there was a king called uh, uh, Hezekiah who the prophet Elijah had decreed from the Lord you're going to die but this man with his mouth reset order if this man with his mouth reset what God said this man with his mouth spoke and said, no, God, remember this and remember this and remember this with his words. By your words, you are justified. By your words, you are condemned. Life and death, Proverbs 18, 21, is in the power of the tongue. And those who love it, those who uh, love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Fruit is appointment. And if you and I keep speaking out of alignment with what God is saying concerning us, we will constantly be disappointed because we don't recognize that everything is programmed to disappoint when we are not appointed. Everything in the earth is a response to man. What do you mean by that? Romans 8 proves it to us by saying all of creation is groaning and waiting in the agony of birth. Why? For the manifestation, for the appointment, for the manifestation of the sons and the daughters of God. Psalm 82 puts it like this, because of you, on account of you, the very foundations of the earth are set out of order. That means your, your world around you is an extension of your life. This is why Proverbs 13 verse 12 is so important. Hope deferred makes the heart sick because the heart is where life comes from. The heart is the, is the, is is the, is the incubator of realities. Uh, your, your life is, is, the, is, the, is, the, is the direct result of how you perceive reality, which is why both of us can go through the same circumstance and come out with different results, not because of our experience, but because of our perception, our point of view, our perspective. And if you don't learn how to change the perspective, how to adjust the clock of your own life, then you're going to see disappointment become the flow, uh, disappointment become the, let me use a word, the doom, uh, uh, because disappointment itself is a river, and once you are in it, disappointment leads to more disappointment, leads to more disappointment, basically there are people on this chat, people who will watch later, who their philosophy on life is go with the flow, and the flow is hugely disappointing, because the flow always chooses the path of least resistance, and never 
meets its appointed time. Are you still with me? So Genesis chapter 1 opens up with a speaking God who saw disappointment and learned to turn around what he saw with what he said. What he said. And then he makes a man in Genesis 1 verse 26 because I want to tell you everything the enemy is doing to you right now is to change. Not what you do. Not what you do. Please don't watch what you do. Watch what you're saying. Don't watch what you're doing. You're, what you're doing is the fruit. You're watching the wrong thing. What you're doing is the fruit. Don't watch what you're doing right now. Some of you are doing some things that baffle you. It's not what you're doing that's the problem. It's what you're saying. Because even when Adam sinned, God said, Adam, where are you? Adam said, I was naked and afraid, so I hid. God didn't say, what did you do? He said, who told you? Where did these words, where did this program, everything you're doing is to change what you're saying. Okay, you, you need more proof. Let's go to um, Joshua. I got, a, I got a few scriptures for you. Joshua um, chapter 1. This is one of my favorite verses, my go-to in the Bible. Um, uh, Joshua chapter 1. I, I've been learning this lately, even when I'm feeling down, just hallelujah, hallelujah. Because I remember actually before the hallelujah was being sung over me, in the dream, I was walking home and I heard the Lord in the dream say, say hallelujah. And I said, I don't feel like saying hallelujah. He said, say hallelujah. And so I went, hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then suddenly as I start saying it, then I started being sung over. Then I started to hear the words, uh, hallelujah. I want to show you how to drastically reset. It's time to reset the course of our life. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8, God was showing Joshua the secret to success. Are you ready for the secret to success? In Joshua chapter 1 verse 8, he said, keep th this book of the Torah. The book of the law means the Torah here. It means the first five books here. But in, in the New Testament, we understand the words of Jesus and the, and the, whole, uh, the whole counsel of scripture. He says, this book of the law, um, keep this book of the law always in your heart? No, that's not what he said. He said, this book of the law should not depart from your mouth. He basically said, there should not be a moment in your life where the word is not in your mouth. You've got to learn to put it in your mouth. See, our pre, our, uh, we, we train children. When I, was, when I trained uh, my kids, um, uh, they would wake up in the morning and they wouldn't say good morning. They'll just come into the room and complain about something. And, you know, uh, Daddy, where's my Nintendo? Or something like that. I said, did you even say good morning? And they go, good morning, Daddy. And, and, and we, <laughs> we trained children to say words they don't mean. Until the day comes that they mean what they say. We have to learn... To say words we don't mean. Because you know your heart doesn't mean. Sometimes God I love you is a decree. <laughs> Sometimes God, God, because the, the more you learn to say yes to God, you build a capacity to say no to the enemy. Sometimes God I love you is is, is setting on course your life. You see, Job, God allowed disappointments to come into Job's life. And Job delayed the disappointment and made it worse. Remember, God said, actually, Satan, this is as far as you can go. It was Job that gave license to Satan to go further. And Job's situation, in what God, where God was judging Job, he was judging Job on the basis of what he was speaking from his mouth concerning God. And he said, who is this who multiplies foolishness? Come and speak before me now. We have to learn to speak truth 
until truth is in our hearts. This is why the Bible says, be not conformed to this world. This world has a power to conform you. It has a power to mold you. Uh, sin and temptation and all the things in this world are working hard to mold, to conform us into a shape, to make us think a certain way. There is a conforming power in this world uh, with, with strong hands that are doing everything in their ability to mold you by your experiences and mold you according to what the enemy is saying concerning you. But if you learn to speak the word of God, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of, how do you renew your mind? We have not taught people how to renew the mind. That means there are things that your mind is bent on doing that the world wants you to do. There are things that your heart, because the Bible says the heart of man is desperately wicked. There are things that your heart wants to do. But I love what Job said. Job, you see, when, when Job said, I made a covenant with my eyes. He basically said, I speak words to my own eyes saying you will not look at a damsel to lust. I made a covenant. I made because the natural proclivity of the flesh is to hide from God, is to sin, is to is to do adultery, fornication, all these things. It's the proclivity of the flesh. But the control center of life is the tongue. It's actually not the mind, it's the tongue. Because if you learn to speak words, he said, this book of the law should not depart from your mouth. From your mouth. Your mouth is the tool of your deliverance. And if you don't learn how to use it, you will allow others to use their mouth on you. And be careful, be careful where somebody's words over you build your self-esteem. Be careful when somebody's words over you build your self-esteem. Because the moment their words are taken, remember, remember John the Baptist, be careful even if a prophet, a prophet's job is not to build your self-esteem, that's God. Trust in the Lord, you'll be established. Trust his prophets and you will prosper. Your establishment is not in prophets. So people who suddenly walk away from God because a man of God sinned or fell, that means you are established in the wrong place. Because here is, here is, here is, here is Jesus, and he, he, he hears from his prophet, who was a national prophet, who the Israel would come out of the corruption of Rome into the Judea wilderness to hear this man prophesy. And as this man is speaking words and he's prophesying, he sees Jesus and he releases a personal prophecy over Jesus. He said, behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. So grandiose was the word. He said, I'm not even worthy to untie his sandals. The, uh, 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 the, the Holy Ghost descends as a dove, like a dove, upon the Lord in that moment. And then a few chapters later, a few chapters later, the same prophet is in prison. And he says, go and ask him, is he the one? Or should we look for another? Go and ask, because I'm disappointed. I See, the, 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 the technology of disappointment is created in a way that once you are out of alignment, you seek to bring others out of alignment also. This is why when you wanted to break out of your friendship group, say you wanted to believe you could be free financially, emotionally, or spiritually, your friends told you, listen, be wise. We've tried this thing before and it failed. We've, they sought to bring you, be careful when people become prisons. They, they seek to bring you into their own disappointment. And so here is John in disappointment seeking to bring Jesus into the prison of his own disappointment. And he sees Jesus, he, he hears reports, maybe Jesus is out there and he has not visited him. And he says, go and ask him, is he the one? Go and sow the same seed of self-doubt in him that's in me right now. Go and sow the same uh, seed of disappointment. John was about to devastate the course of Israel. Imagine if Jesus had received the seed of disappointment. You see, Jesus was so keen to disappointment and appointment. You've got to be keen to it. In one essence, here is, um, here is um, his uh, apostle, um, uh, Peter, who's saying, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus goes, My God, 
What you just spoke is the ordinance, the order of heaven, the ordinance, the revelation of heaven. You spoke something not just revelatory, but in time, in this moment. You sowed something right now, a, a present truth and a revelation. And this was revealed to you by my father in heaven. He was keen to the appointment. A few chapters later, Peter looks at him and he says, good words, good words. Good words are often demonic. And he looks at Jesus and he says, hey, Jesus, you will not go to the cross. And Jesus pointing at Peter, not around. He said, get behind me, Satan. Basically, you have the same capacity to be a vehicle of God and a vehicle of Satan. You have the same capacity to speak the ordinances of God or be hijacked by a demonic voice to speak. And in that moment, Jesus saw Satan, had possessed the mouth of Peter. And he says, get thee behind me, Satan. He said, because you have not in mind the things of God, but the things of man. That this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. I'm teaching you, I don't, want to, I don't want to elevate disappointment above God, but I'm showing you instead that you are God's appointment. And one of the ways to handle disappointment is to learn how to speak. Is to learn how to speak. Basically, what I want to tell you is in the midst of your disappointment, you have the right to remain silent. But anything you do say will be held against you. The children of Israel had to learn in the season of the wilderness, in the time of disappointment, in the time of, what is disappointment all about? It's the time of testing. Is there a place where God disappoints us? Does God ever disappoint us? Hmm. My answer to this question is yes. Don't stone me, let me finish. My answer to this question is yes. Let's go to John 11. Do I have water? Is it possible to just have water, please? Uh, John 11. It says, Now a certain man named Lazarus was sick. He was from Bethany, the village where Mary and her sister Martha lived. It was Mary who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair. So it's discussing the history of this family, the memorable things that this family has done for the Lord. Wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. So the sister sent word to him, to the Lord, to Jesus, saying, Lord, our brother and your friend. I love what the Amplify says, because Lazarus was Jesus' friend. He says, our brother... And your friend, whom you love, is sick. Oh, you got to hear this. When Jesus heard this, he said, This sickness will not end in death. But on the contrary, it is for the glory and the honor of God, so the Son of God may be glorified by it. Verse 5. You've got to hear verse 5. Now Jesus loved and was concerned about Martha and her sister and Lazarus, and considered them their friends. So what... So, I need to read this verse again. I'm sorry, I need to read this verse again. Please hear this verse. This, this baffled me. Now Jesus loved and was concerned about Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that Lazarus was sick, he stayed in the same place. I need to read it again. I think you missed it. Now Jesus loved. God so loved the world, right? Now Jesus loved and was concerned about Martha and her sister Lazarus. So when he heard that Lazarus was sick, he stayed in the same place two more days. Does anyone understand that? Thank you. Does anyone get that? He loves them so much that he stayed. I have, two, I have two inferences from that. And this is really my main inference that I'm going to make from this verse that, I, that I've just read. He loved them so much. But he knows God's timing and order for them. 
So he stays back. I, I, I truly believe, I truly believe the part of why he stayed back in his humanity is he does not want to be around the environment that he's going to force God's hand to do something. So he stays back. Is there a place where God loves you so much that he stays? You've invited him to come before something dies and he stays. But he had just proclaimed an appointed thing of God. That this sickness will not end in death. You see, God has released certain prophecies over you. Each and every one of you have prophetic words. Whether you know the prophetic words or not, whether you've come to accept the prophetic words of God concerning you or not, each and every one of you have prophetic and profound promises from God over your life. Whether somebody's prophesied to you or the scriptures have spoken to you, you have profound prophetic uh, promises over, over your, your life. Is there a place where the prophecy is tested? Is there a place where God speaks something? You see, part unwrapped into the love language of God is testing. One of the things I, I had to learn as a human being to do is test everybody in my life. There are stages and platforms. You say, how do you trust? You trust in tests. You trust in tests. And if they don't pass the test, they stay in that class. And if they pass the test, they come up to a new class. And if they fail the test at this level, they stay at this class, they don't go to the higher one. Everything that God does, every prophecy is tested. And it's tested for a reason. Because you have, disappointment cannot exist if there's not an appointment. But there's a way you believe God's going to do it. There's a, if I were God mentality. The truth is about God, is you truly are the appointment. And I'll tell you why. Because God will not give you a thing that will inevitably take you away from him. God will not give you, see, the, the goodness of God that's different from the, from the devil is the devil will give all his kids everything in the pursuit of happiness. Anything they want, it's just that those things that they get have the capacity to destroy them. Or those things that they get that make them happy have, come with the forfeiture of their soul. God will test everything he gives you through a process of time so that your character can rise to the very thing he wants to give you. So I want to give you a little principle here. Watch how you behave in the time of disappointment. Disappointment should never be the excuse. Disappointment is opportunity for godliness. Please write this down because we're, we, we're, we, we've come into a time and I've seen it even recently where various things are going on even in the body of Christ and people are using the season of disappointment as opportunities to behave against way, the way they know they ought to. When you know the right to do and you do the wrong, you're wicked. When you know the right to do and abstain from doing it, you're equally wicked. Because the times are hard does not denote the ability to be godly. In fact, when the times are harder, godliness shines more. In the, in the corridor season, when we're waiting for God to open the next door, we are in the school of character. In the waiting, we're developing patience. In the waiting, we're learning godly character. In the waiting, we're learning that God is the source of all things. In the wilderness, we're learning. You see, I've seen so many people in the time of disappointment. Let's say a man of God disappoints you or a friend disappoints you, whatever. We use it as an opportunity to act against all godliness. And it's only then through the promise that God can test your heart. It's only in the purview of the promise, with the process, that God is searching. I believe part of why God waits back and watches is he's seeing the reaction that's going on in your heart. How do you cope with disappointment? What comes out of you, sponge, when you're squeezed? 
It's in this process that we find out who you really are. If certain gossip gets on your table and you become the propagator of gossip, you become the slanderer, the talker, you become the one who continues on the voice, then we're finding out in the disappointment who you really are. If you leave just because you're disappointed, oh, when things were good, you sang Hosanna. When things are bad, you say crucify him. You're not a person of character. You see, everything that God wants to give you must come through you. And I just want to say this as a, as a prophetic thing. Everything God wants to give you is going to come through you and from you. What do I mean? In life, you do not get what you want. You get who you are. And when God wants to increase your... I, I, I was te- speaking to my business team something that I heard that was so powerful. There are three kinds of people in this world. There's the, there's the poor, the rich and the wealthy. The poor always say there's not enough money, not enough money, not enough time, not enough people, not enough friends, always making excuses. Uh, There's never enough. The rich are always chasing money to their detriment. They're always chasing money to their detriment. The wealthy have a different kind of problem. They don't love money, money loves them. And why? Why? I want to quickly go on the school of character because I, I... and, and I'll bounce between your words and your character. I want to go on the school of character. Because in the time of disappointment, in the time of God's judging, he's watching your reactions. He's watching your character. He's watching to see what's in you. He's watching to see if you were taking notes or you're ready to take action. He's watching. He's watching your heart. He's observing you right now. See, in this, in this, in this time, we, we discover what's in us. God will always give us a promise and then we, then we go through a wilderness. It's always been his MO. Hey, children of Israel, I'm going to take you through a land flow with milk and honey. But I'm not telling you about the wilderness, the Amalekites, the Anakites, the, the parasites, the pesticides, the cellulites, and all the things you're about to face on the way to this promise. I'm not going to tell you about all of that, but I will give you a promise. But I'm going to take you through a school of character till you realize you are the appointed. And how you behave in this corridor, between this door and that door, determines qualification or disqualification. Not from heaven. You're going to heaven. I'm talking about how life operates here. You see, I've never seen a coconut begging people to eat it. Yet people will risk their life to climb tall trees to get a coconut. I've never seen gold begging people to buy it. Yet people will dig underground and risk their life to get gold. I haven't seen a pearl saying, please, please buy me. Yet people will swim to great depth to get that oyster and and remove the pearl from the oyster. What does the oyster learn? What did the pearl learn? What did the coconut learn? If you become the value, all these things get attached to you. The life is not about getting Life is about attracting. If you're constantly facing disappointment, 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 maybe stop working on life and start working on you. Maybe you'll find at the scene of every disappointment in your life, at the scene of every disappointment in your life, I met somebody who said, all these, all guys are, all men are trash. I said, have you noticed though that at the scene of every crime, one suspect is always there? You. You. So maybe you're hanging around at the level of which you're meeting trash. And perhaps, just perhaps, if you grew as a person, if you utilize the season, instead of calling it disappointment, instead you utilize the time in the waiting To develop godliness. I've seen seen so much ungodliness come up in, in my life, in the life of others, in the time of waiting. Part of God's testing process is how we deal with this season of waiting. Impatience can lead to ungodliness. What do we do in this time of waiting? However, we can also, by our ungodliness, elongate the time of waiting. We can make it worse. 
use disappointment as an opportunity to express who God is. It's, it's actually now. This is the time. You know, all the time when things were good, that wasn't it. When things became the worst they could, now's the time. Love is now going to be relevant here because here's an enemy. And we keep missing the moments of God. Imagine God coming to your scene, it's void and without form, and just sitting down and being disappointed. He himself shows us how to deal with disappointment. Use it as an opportunity for God's visions to come to pass. I'll give you another thing. Disappointment is, is God's marketplace. Basically, every disappointment creates a market. Every disappointment creates an opportunity. I love David because David has a promise on his life. He has a promise. This is why I say resist the urge when you're on the verge. He has a promise over his life and he's going to be the king of Israel. How can he be the king of Israel when there's a king on, in, on Israel's throne? So one day, the king on Israel's throne is, is treating David like a fugitive. He wants to falsely imprison him for something he did not even do. He's chasing after him for crimes of treason that he had not even committed. And David is hiding now in Ziklag. He's in the cave of Adullam with his, with his men. And as he's in the cave, Saul, who's looking to assassinate him, is relieving himself in the cave that David is hiding in. Imagine having a prophecy over your life that you're going to be a king. There's a sword strapped to you. The man is right there relieving himself with his back turned. I'm speaking to my backstabbers today. I'm speaking to those of you who love to stab people in the back when they're not looking. I'm speaking to the cows. Imagine David, is, Saul is relieving himself. I have a promise that I'm going to be king. God is not just watching his promises, but how you plan on acquiring it. Through what methods you plan? Is there a way that you're going to maneuver his promise? So, so there's a lot of people right now, there's a lot of people right now who can't wait for their men of God to fall. Because they believe it's that there's a lot of people who cannot wait. I've seen, I've heard God this morning while I was in the bathroom saying, the vultures are gathering. The vultures are gathering. There's a lot of people who right now, maybe they have some promise over their life that they're going to be a minister, but they've been watching somebody minister for a long time, not knowing God is killing their ego in that time. And now God is watching how you respond in this moment. There's a lot going on right now. This book of the law, I should not depart from your mouth. Where was I? So Saul is relieving himself. David's men say, go and kill him. This is your time. God is making you king now. Go and do it. Resist the urge when you're on the verge. David simply walked out because disappointment, God delaying something or the perception of disappointment is the school of character. It's a school of character. Here David leans in and tears a piece of Saul's garment. And the Bible says, look at the heart of this man. Look at the heart. This is why David was a man after God's heart. Look at the heart of this man. The Bible says it smote him that he even took a piece of the Lord's anointed garment. You see, character is who you are regardless of what's going on. Character doesn't change. This is why we're saying our God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Character is how God knows he can trust you. That you don't change because of the circumstances have differed. And so here, David simply takes the, the garment of Saul. And he says, Saul, I had it in my power to kill you this day. He said, my father, my father, I had it in my power to kill you this day. But see, I didn't do it. Saul said, I've sinned against you. I wronged you. And Saul still continued. David said, I dare not bring a reviling statement against the Lord's anointed. Basically, David was saying, I'm not going to become king by putting someone else down. There are so many people who the only avenue they see to be promoted in life is not humility and service. The only avenue that they perceive for promotion to be possible in their life is to pull other people down. There are some people who in their entire their entire life assignment is based on pulling other people down. 
I can literally take each of my principles from David. David is discouraged. This is why this man is a man after God's heart. David is discouraged. All his wife's children and everyone was taken at Ziklag. All his wives and children were taken. And the Bible says the men began to cry until they had no more tears. But it says uh, when David saw his men desire to stone him, he said, where is the Ammon? Where is the Thummon? He put on his priestly garment and he began to, the Bible says, he began to encourage himself in the Lord. Your words have power. Learn to encourage yourself in the seasons of hardship. Learn to say, my appointed time has come. I will not miss it. Learn to decree the promises of God concerning you. Even if you have dreams that you keep on missing buses, start to decree. Instead of telling everyone around you, I keep having a dream that I keep missing buses. I think I'm going to lose God, miss God's timing. I'm worried I'm going to... No, no, start decreeing out of your mouth. I will not miss the timings of God concerning me. In fact, I command life to conspire, to bring to pass every word and promise God has spoken concerning me. Learn to put the word again in your mouth. It's the only way to break the cycles of delay that are going on in our life. Uh, 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 I could take everything from David's life. Learn the school of character. Learn the school of character. At the moment, David had the opportunity to kill Saul in the time of his disappointment. But instead of killing Saul, he he simply took a piece of his garment. Learn this. The third thing that we can do is learn that every disappointment is a marketplace for God. Every disappointment is a marketplace for God to reveal that you are the appointment. What do I mean by this? There was a time that Saul and all his men were hiding. There was a giant proclaiming over the land that I'm going to kill all these people. I'm going. Church, we need to recognize our opportunities now. We need to recognize, you know, God calls Moses, I love this. And Sam, if you can uh, play me out, I'm, I'm going to finish now. God calls Moses, and I love this. And he calls him, and he says, the children of Israel have been disappointed for, I think it was 400 years. They've been praying, 400 years. Generational prayers, they've been crying out to God. And God is looking at Moses, and Moses is looking at God. And God is looking at Moses, and it's like, okay. And... God just says, the children of Israel, they're disappointed. Moses is like, okay, God, what are you going to do? God said, I'm sending you. God, no, but you're God. You, you, you come and... He said, I'm, I'm sending you. You are God's appointment. The, the original Hebrew says, when it says, I am that I am, what he's saying is, I am sent. Basically, in the Hebrew, it literally translates as, Moses, I am sent. Basically, when you go back, I am will be sent in you. Don't, I'm not answering this question because I don't want to be limited by the title that men give you. Just know I'm unlimited in you. I am sent. I am coming in you th to Moses. To, to Pharaoh, and I will make you a God to Pharaoh. Moses, the real question is, how much of yourself are you going to give to me? Because I am sent to Egypt. God basically said, you are the vehicle I'm coming through. You are the appointed. The interesting thing about the appointed of God is we often don't feel appointed. And sometimes I think God prefers it that way. So that in, in our weakness, his strength will be made magnificently strong. If you're waiting for everything to be right before you move, we will be waiting for you forever. If you're waiting for yourself to be perfect before you take the risks that God has called you to take, well, I don't know if it's ever going to happen. Remember, Moses has just come out of the same disappointment. Perhaps God called you out. I love this because perspective matters. This is why decree in the time in your wilderness season, you're learning how to think. You're learning how to think. Each one of these points I could preach a whole year on. I could preach 10 years on each one of these points. The power of the tongue, the power of the mouth. There's one more scripture I want to give you on the power of the mouth. 
that baffles when you really meditate on it. But Moses, David, the, the King Saul's men are hiding. Everybody's, you know, hiding. David sees in this disappointment a marketplace and an opportunity. Perhaps the disgruntlement of the world around you is preparing a marketplace for you. Perhaps if you recognize it, if you recognize the pain, you can convert it into God's vision and God's possibility. Perhaps in this moment, God is saying, let there be light. You see, in Genesis, God, met, God speaks, but the moment he made man, he said, man, you have dominion and authority. God no longer named a thing in the earth again. He didn't give anything a name anymore because God cannot violate his own promises. He just gave this man authority. So then the Bible says he brought all the animals to Adam to see what he would call them. The word there is kara. It means to give them their purpose, their identity, their function, and to set them in order. To set them in order. The very same thing God was doing when he kara the sun. He was setting it in order. He was teaching it. Daytime is when you manifest. Nighttime is when you do this. Adam's job was to kara, to code the very DNA of these animals, the very, the very way they would think, the very way they would work, the very way they would structure and organize their life, with genius. When man sinned, the tongue became more and more perverse. James, I believe, does it justice. James does it justice in James, the second chapter. James, the second chapter. I'm almost done. Man, I wish you learned the power of your words. Some of you need to go online and just type in rice experiment, rice experiment on YouTube. Uh, it will show you this experiment where people get three tubs of rice. One, they call it good. The other one, they call it bad. These aren't born again people. They call it bad. The other one they call ignore. And they'll get the bad rice, say, you're wicked, you're stupid, you ugly, you're dumb, you're dumb, you're thick, you're stupid, every day. Then they'll get the good rice, you intelligent, you wise, you're so good, you're so wonderful. Then they'll leave the ignore rice over and over and over again. This rice remains good, this rice spoils, and this rice spoils slowly. Don't think that you not speaking gives you the right, because even by not speaking, you are spoiling, it's just happening slowly. Stop waiting for a prophet or a preacher to tell you who you are. Start to put the word of God in your own mouth. That's, that's its first application. Before it manifests in your behavior, it must be programmed into your mind and your heart. Otherwise, it remains a nice slogan on the t-shirt, I'm the light of the world. But to truly meditate on that and put it in your spirit changes everything. There are some people who just don't take the word of God seriously. Um, James the second chapter and this is my landing point today James the second chapter says my fellow believers do not let me let me get the exact place um that's it, James 3, sorry, I'm one chapter behind. James 3, I'm in the Amplified. It says, hear, the, hear these words, please. Let them go deep into your spirit. It says, not many of you should become teachers. I'm going to skip to verse 2. Hear this. For we all stumble and sin in many ways. Do you hear that? We all sin in so many ways. We all have so many character flaws. It's, it's as if it's, it's hard to keep a tab on everything, right? Because you, you fix this sin issue and then this one rises. Then you think you fix that one, then a new one rises. It says we all sin in so many ways. We all stumble and sin in many ways. If anyone does not stumble in what he says, never saying the wrong thing, the Amplified said, he is a perfect man. Do you hear that? He's basically saying what you do is to change what you say. What you do is to change what you say. 
But what you say should change what you do. That's the right way the program works. By faith we understand that the world was programmed by the voice of God. Our lives are the same way. We set our lives in order or we set our lives off course by what we say, what we keep on saying. Not just, I'm not saying say this once today. No, no say it. Put the word of God in your mouth and keep on saying it. Keep on warring with the prophecies, regardless of what you've seen, regardless of what's happened. Keep on warring with the prophecies concerning your life. And life will come to test whether you mean what you say. Say it till you mean it. He says he is a perfect man, fully developed in character. My goodness. When you don't stumble in what you say, you're a perfect man, fully developed in character without serious flaws. Able to bridle his whole body. So this is the key to self-control here. And rein in his entire nature, taming his human faults and weaknesses. Verse 3. Now if we put bits in horses' mouths to make them obey us, we guide the whole body. And look at ships. Even though they are so large and are driven by strong winds, they are still directed by a very small rudder. God is showing you who the director of your life is. It's, oh, this may shock you. The director of your life is not even God. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, I know the thoughts I have towards you. Thoughts are good. Doesn't mean those thoughts are going to come to pass. You see, there are some who believe in determinism, that God has determined their fate, their future, and their life. And in a way, there is a determined wind that blows. But you still chart the course if you choose to. This is God giving you participation in, in the will of God with your words, your words, your mouth. It does not matter the blowing of the wind, but the direction of the sails. It does not matter the blowing of the wind. What matters is the direction of your sails. My friend Miguel always says that. It doesn't matter how the wind blows. It's the direction of the sails. If you can control that rudder, you can control the direction. In the same sense, the tongue is a small part of the body, and yet it boasts of great things. See how a great forest is set on fire by a small spark. And the tongue, in a sense, is a fire, a world. The, the, see, James is revealing a revelation here. Your tongue is a world. Your tongue is a universe of injustice and unrighteousness. The tongue is set among our members as that which contaminates the entire body and sets on fire the course of our life. See, your tongue, if you've ever seen it, it's got a slit in the middle. Your tongue is a sword. Imagine giving a sword to a child, the damage they would do with that. Do you know how much damage has been done by people who don't know how to wield this sword properly. It says, for every species of beast and bird of reptile and sea creature is tamed and has been tamed by man, but no one can tame the human tongue. It is a restless and undisciplined evil, full of deadly poison. With it, we bless our Lord and Father, and with it, we curse men who have been made in the likeness of God. Out of the same mouth come both blessing and cursings. These things, my brothers, should not be this way, for we have a moral obligation to speak in a manner that reflects our fear of God and profound respect for Him. Does a spring send out from the same both fresh and bitter water? Can a fig tree, my brothers, produce olives or grapevine produce figs? nor can salt water produce fresh water. It's so interesting. You see, when a tree produces fruit, that is the appointment of the tree. And every tree has an appointed time with which it produces fruit. I think bamboos take eight years. I think elephants are pregnant for two years. Everything, has, this is why I say, don't trust anything that didn't come through you. Perhaps you are the appointment and this is the fruit. You've got to learn life and death is in the power of the tongue. Proverbs 18, 21. Those who love it shall eat the fruit, the fruit thereof. Guys, I'm done. 
with uh, this uh, today. I, I know I took disappointment from a different angle. I'm sure you weren't expecting it. Um, but let's pray in the spirit. And let's see what the Lord does today. And let's see who he speaks to and what he wants to say. Would you all just open your mouth and pray in the Holy Ghost? Even if you're in this room, whether you're watching us live online, just pray in the Holy Ghost. You see, one of the things I love to do is pray in tongues because I'm praying the Spirit because I believe that's God taming the tongue. I believe God is taming my words. I believe he's taming the tongue. I believe he's teaching me in words not taught by intelligent languages how to speak and how not to speak. There is the right thing to say and the wrong thing to say. And I believe that when we pray in the Spirit, God is teaching us in words not taught by human wisdom, but taught by the Lord. Would you open your mouth and just pray in the Holy Ghost? Lebro kushi la la marika more me mente de onsa. Monte beli kabro sura ma mandele kabro sura bapa. Lebro unte legemre isondo la mahandre kebro ushe balikania. Rosso pre ita la kemre isandre kapora. Mendele kabro sura ma libro usonte de bebehe. Robo bokore me me ita la kabra isande. Monturo mahaste vedi ansa. Mendele kabro sura me mente le kabro hude vehia. Me sopre ki andra ma. When you and I pray in the Holy Ghost, we are setting God's appointment. We are, we, are, we are setting the courts of our lives back in God's order. We're building ourselves up on our most holy faith. Shamarigan Sonto, Lebro Sutu Cobreenda la Cababa, Mandeleon Sumre Isada, Mecabreeso Tolome Ida la Cabreeso, Rababayen no Cobro Hushe Mani Casadia. Ate Bore Memente le Cassia no Momo Shababa, Rotola de Yancusuta la Mahastes. I just felt even as I, we were praying that there are those watching who are bearing a responsibility that's not theirs. I felt like a weight upon the heart and I was asking the Lord, what is that? And the Spirit of God right now is dealing with false responsibility. False, a false sense of responsibility. A false sense that it is your responsibility to fix everybody's lives around you. A false sense that it is your responsibility to your detriment. This has been done to your detriment. There are responsibilities we have for those who are around us, but this one is being done to your detriment. And in fact, it's releasing a, a sense of depression. It's been releasing a sense of even a suicidal uh, uh, um, uh, uh, thing going on with you. And if that's you, just identify yourself in the chat if you're dealing with that or if the Lord is, is bearing any kind of witness to that in your heart. Father, right now, we just rebuke all false responsibilities. It's like you're carrying the weight for family members who are just disappointed with you and they try to place things upon you that what that's it that that was their own disappointment in themselves but they try to even put that on your back they try to lay it at, at the feet of your own life it's it's literally uh, like Saul putting his own armor on David Saul putting his experiences upon David and God is dealing with that in you I see you see and uh, Nosifo as well uh, father right now I just lift the cloud of disappointment over Nuna right now, over, over C right now, over Nasiba right now. Father, I lift the cloud of disappointment even now off of them in the mighty name of Jesus. I command that weight to be lifted. I rebuke it. I command it to go right now in Jesus' name. Even the weight of ministers or the weight of ministries that somebody just laid it upon you. A minister put their disappointment with themselves even upon you. Father, where your people 
people are wearing the armor of Saul. I just command that armor to be lifted right now in the mighty name of Jesus. And I command them that they will walk with ease and that they will walk with peace. And Father, whether it needs to be a leaving or a distancing or a drawing of boundaries, the Father, you will begin to draw and realign boundaries right now in the name of Jesus. There's somebody watching and it's, you've been dealing with this for the last, I feel like it's been like the last week or so, severe migraine headaches. If it's you, please just identify yourself. Severe, I've just been seeing like severe migraine headaches. It's come on even in the night. You're just literally just trying to press your head all the time. Whoever that is, please just announce and just let me know that I'm talking to you. Severe migraine headaches. You've just been, uh, you've just been dealing with it um, all this time. Like severe, almost like it's just pressing you. Nocifo, um, um, you've been dealing with it. Uh, Paul, I want to um, uh, deal with it. Uh, Carol, I, I hear you. Awesome. Father, right now, we just rebuke even now migraine headaches in the name of Jesus. Father, even now, we just command those headaches to go in Jesus' mighty name. And I believe this is connected even to things in, in like the false responsibilities. Certain weights have been trying to sit even on you. And there's somebody watching, it's been particularly demonic, like a pressing on your head, like an oppression. If it's you, please let me know. Like a pressing down on the head. It's been particularly demonic. Anki, I see you. Like a pressing. And I can see somebody else it's been like I see somebody else it's been like even on your bed like a demonic pressing down it's, it's a demonic thing it's not just a it's not just a natural thing that somebody it's, it's been like a, a, a witchcrafting that's been going on around you I rebuke that right now in Jesus name we just command that Kieran I command it off of you right now in the name of Jesus I command it to go I speak a blood covering around your house I speak a blood covering around your room is there somebody watching from a postcode b112 or something like that i keep seeing this number i want to do b112 I, I think it's like birmingham you're watching from or, or, or something like that i just keep seeing this postcode if it's you just type birmingham and let me know but i just keep seeing this postcode that somebody's watching from and it's like you're watching us from birmingham just type birmingham i see yes me but i need to know if it's particularly you because i feel like god has a word for you so father right now we just Rebuke. Kieran, uh, uh, um, Father, right now, I speak over Kieran in the name of the Lord Jesus. And Kieran, God is moving in your family right now. God is ordering things that went out of order. I don't know what it is in family relationship like fathering or something like that. But God is ordering things even round about you right now. God is moving. He, he's doing it as a sign of wonder. Moving in the middle of, midst of your family right now. He's, he, he, he's doing something even with you. And even in the message, the calluses were coming off. And I want to rebuke something even off of you. I want to rebuke the words that were spoken. I want to rebuke even things that you came in to agreement with with your own mouth so father right now I speak over those ones this is your time of deliverance this is your time of liberty and I command that the cloud of wickedness that the enemy can even try to put upon you to be lifted right now in Jesus name here and I don't know what this is that, that I'm, I'm feeling but it's like contention in the realm of the spirit concerning you it's been like a violent season a season of of almost uh, um, a silent panic like uh, uh, can anyone hear me like a voice going on on the inside of you but God is restoring to you and I see in the realm of the spirit like a furnace God is restoring to you like a fire that you'd even felt was gone like a fire that you had even felt was lost in a time or in a season gone by 
roko babande le gambro usita la mahaya ro she be ita la kabro si be isis rime indolo me ika de le kababo suta la mahaste rume ika de le me suzumre isa la maha a a growth um I I feel like I'm talking to someone right now uh, like a growth in 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 the breast area or something like that a cancer scare or cancer I don't know if you're on here or if you will be on here but if it's you if it's if it's cancer or cancer in the family or something I just feel like I'm dealing with a spirit right now of cancer an assignment of death right now and father in the name of Jesus we rebuke the, the assignment of death in the name of Jesus we rebuke cancer there there she is a, a, a faster father right now romaita la la babi campone de vida we command this growth to, be, to shrivel up. We command it to disappear right now in the name of Jesus. I speak the fire of God over you, over you right now. I command healing power. I, I rebuke and I curse that cancer. I curse cancerous cells in your body right now. I command them to go, to disappear from your body in the name of the Lord Jesus. I feel I feel like I'm seeing somebody's gut. And it's like you've been diagnosed recently. It's like something going on in the gut region, like a like IBS, like Crohn's disease, like something just terrible in the gut. I can feel the fire of God right now. Now, if that's you, just type the word gut or stomach. Like you have irritable bowel, you have issues in the bowel, you have problems in your stomach area. I want to pray for you right now if you're watching me and you've had issues in your stomach area. I feel like the Holy Ghost wants to touch you. You've had an irritable bowel. Uh, thank you, uh, Tino. Thank you, Mandy. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, I just pray over these guts, these irritable bowels, uh, and, and, and I cut off anxiety. I cut off fear of the future. I cut off of you fear of failure. That's coming because there's a fear of failure and it's dumping too much acid into your system. Father, right now I rebuke the spirit of fear. I rebuke the spirit of anxiety. I rebuke the spirit of depression. I rebuke it. There's an anxiety. There's a fear. There's a panic over you that somehow something is happening. Father, right now by your power, move in guts, move in stomachs, move in the intestines move in this area and father I decree the healing power of God right now in the name of the Lord Jesus I'm in someone's house right now and I feel like I'm sitting on a sofa with you and you are, you are uh, right now, it's like your back is turned in this vision, but it's as if it's as if you're, you're just, it's, it's your marriage. It's your marriage. It's your marriage. You're even wondering whether to leave. It's your marriage. I can just see you. It's, you're just. Uh, you love God. You love the Lord. Please type marriage. If you need a miracle in your home right now, please type marriage. Because I can see God and, and, and. You just, it's your husband, his decisions, his choices. I know this is a one that, there we go. It's just this thing in marriage. Could we pray in the Holy Ghost over these marriages right now? 
Let's pray in the Holy Ghost. Let's pray in the Holy Ghost. Let's pray in the Holy Ghost. You are still the God of miracles. You are still the God of wonders. You are still the God of mighty signs. You see every one of these people. Father, I pray move in these marriages. Move upon these men. Father, turn around homes. Father, we're not just making words, we're, we're, we're asking you right now. Release angels into marriages. Remove, release angels right now into marriages. Into homes, kisa prose vita la bro talamana, riga bore me mendele gabro suta la baeso. Do miracles in our homes, do miracles in our marriages. Shato re bebele gabro son petenin son tola mahate. And I believe this last place I want to pray for because I, I, I saw the Lord say this. I heard the Lord say this. Pray for miracles. Pray for miracle money. I, I, I don't believe I've ever used those words because I don't like the combination of those words because how it's been used. But I felt like the Lord said, pray for miracle money. Miracle money. I want you to do something, if you will. Grab a wallet. If you have one, grab something that represents your finances. I feel the anointing of God here. Grab something that represents your finances. Grab something right now, whether it's your bank card, whatever it is. Even if it's your mobile phone, if your, if your cards are on your phone, I want you to grab something that represents your finances. I also want you to grab something that represents your connections. Grab your mobile phone. If, if, that's, what, if that's what it is, I want you to grab it. As I feel like God's doing a miracle in your, in, your, in your finances and in your connections. In your finances and in your connections. Pray in the Holy Ghost like you've never prayed before. Pray in the Holy Ghost like you've never prayed before. Pray without dignity. Pray in the Holy Ghost like you've never prayed before. If you don't know how to pray in the Holy Ghost, just keep saying Jesus. Just say hallelujah. Say something. I command miracles right now. I command debt cancellations. I command bills to be cleared and to be settled. I command rebates and tax rebates. I command unexpected income. I command giving even from your enemies. I command finances to arise from unusual sources. I command funding and financial benefactors. I command it now in the name of Jesus. I command the turning of your season. I command the drought to end. I speak abundance in the name of Jesus. I speak an abundance of supply. I speak to your connections to upgrade. I speak to your friendship circles to upgrade. I speak a leaving and a cleaving. I speak that certain people will go and certain people will come. I speak that important people will favor you. That God will rise on your behalf. I decree it in the name of Jesus. I decree it in the name of Jesus. 
Watch what God does over the next 30 days. Watch what God does in your connections. Watch what God does in your finances. Watch what God does over the next 30 days in your life. Watch who called you that you never intended on calling. Watch who suddenly remembered you. God is going to cause people to suddenly remember you. People who forgot you. God is going to make them suddenly, suddenly, suddenly. They're going to remember you suddenly. They're going to call you suddenly. He's going to make it happen suddenly. Rokomansi talamande. Father, upgrade us. Open our eyes, open our hearts. Upgrade us. Upgrade us. Even now, and make us aware of the ways you're doing it. Open our eyes and our ears. Upgrade our technology, our weaponry. Upgrade us even in the night season to dream dreams and see visions. Take us to another dimension of prophetic keenness. Let it make us aware of what we have in you. Open our eyes, our spirit man. Make us know we are your appointment. Set our lives in order. Bring us back in course. Come on, decree words over your life. Set us back in order. Put us back in, in, in timing and in season. Where we've been derailed, we decree we are back on the right track. On the right course, we will never miss it. Lika brosuta la mansa. Roma mantilega. This is my time. It's my season. This is my time to come forth. Everything delayed. Burst forth right now. Father, we speak to the conspiring of the wicked one. Father, your word says, he that digs a pit will fall into it. He that lays the snare will be snared in it. Father, I speak to the conspiring of the enemy right now. Father, I speak to his exaggerations. I speak to his excesses. Father, right now, let it come to nothing. Father, right now, let every snake that you didn't intend be shaken into the fire. Let every spirit of scandal on that's being released in the atmosphere right now silence its voice. A new anointing. A new anointing, a new time, a new season. Maybe you're watching us today and you're not born again. That means you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. He's not living inside of you, breathing as a living Son of God. Jesus died for you on the cross over 2,000 years ago so that you would know the Father. The ultimate goal of Jesus was to bring you into eternal life and eternal life is to know the Father. It's time to come home. It's time to realize that there's no life except in Christ. And if you're watching us today and God has opened your heart to believe, the Bible says it's easy to be born again. You believe with your heart that Jesus is Lord, that God saved him, sent him to die for you, and you confess it with your mouth. If you're watching us today and you want to be born again, please type in the comment section right now, born again. Type in the comment section right now, born again. If you want to give your life to Jesus, please do a hand up emoji, one hand up emoji. Let us know that you want to give your life to Jesus by putting that one hand up emoji. If you've got it, I want to know if you want to give your life to Jesus today. If that's you, you want to be born again. You're saying, I want to know the Lord personally. Type the word born again. Type 
type the word born again, whatever you have to put there to let us know that you want to be born again. You want to give your life to the Lord today. Please do type it in the chat today that you desire to be born again. You desire to know Jesus. Oh, Father, if there's just one, if you desire to be born again today, you desire to know the Lord as your personal Lord and Savior. Amen. There's Delila. Anyone else want to join her? Anybody else want to join her? You're saying, Jesus, I want to know you personally. I want to make a decision to know you personally. I want to confess you as my Lord and my Savior. Is there anyone else that wants to join her? Just type the word born again, born again. If you want to join her today, you want to be born again. I'm rededicating. God bless you, Nasifo. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Um, uh, Flower, I don't believe that's your name, but God bless you. You want to be born again today. Ayodeji, uh, God bless you. You want to be born again today. This is awesome. You want to be born again today. You came in my dream with God last night. I know this is the time. Oh, awesome. That's so awesome. That's so awesome. Amen. Amen. Well, why don't you just... This is a beautiful time. Just ask him. Just say, precious Jesus, I believe you're the son of God. I believe you died for me on the cross. I so believe it. I believe you took my place. Come into my life. I open the door to you. I open the door. I believe that you are Lord of my life. From today, I make a decision to follow you. Man, if you've made that prayer, you are now born again. And we want to welcome you into the family. We want to welcome you into the family. Please, please don't disappear if you made that prayer. I beg you, don't disappear. Please send an email. Send us an email. Please. All you need to do is info at lightlondon.org and in the subject put born again. You don't need to say anything else. If you want to say more, say more. But in the title, put born again and a member of our family team will get in touch with you. A member of our family team, our church family team will get in touch with you. But a big welcome, a big welcome, a big welcome to the family of the Lord. A big welcome to knowing the Father personally as your Lord and Savior. It's that time where we honor the Lord with our giving. The Bible says, honor the Lord with your giving. It's that time where we honor the Lord, where we thank Him for the produce, where we thank Him for the increase, where we thank Him for, for protecting us, where we thank Him for, for giving to us. We honor the Lord with our giving. Many of you know that Light London is in a place where we are about getting our own building in Jesus' name. And uh, we are praying and working miracles with God to, to make this thing come to pass. If you believe in this message, you believe in this ministry, I want to ask you to be generous with your giving today. Generous. Be abundant with your giving. If you love the Lord, for God so loved the world that he gave. Giving is a representation of love. It's a representation of love. And some people go, well, God doesn't care how much I give. Of course he does. The Bible says, those who sow sparingly shall reap sparingly, but those who sow stingily shall reap stingily. God cares about giving. The earth and heaven operate backwards. Earth, if you want to get up, you knock other people down. In heaven, if you want to get up, you take the low road and you be humble. In earth, you want to be first, you, you, you knock people out. Uh, in heaven, you want to be first, become the, late, become the least. In earth, you want to get, go and steal, go and acquire, go and rob people. In heaven, you want to get, give. And it shall come back to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall men give unto your bosom. If you love the Lord, give out of, see some of us give out of our experience. Well, let me look at how much I have, and then, I, no, no. Give out of your expectation. Give out of your expectation. 
some information is about to appear on the screen. I believe there's some link that you can copy with your phone or with your phone camera. They did something really cool like that last week. I don't know if we're going to be that cool this week. Yeah, but something's going to appear on the screen uh, for, for you to give. Don't disappear because I'll be right back with the announcements in about two minutes. God bless you. everybody and thank you so much for being with us today for Light London service. We are praying about getting back to service. A lot of you have been asking us when can we start meeting in person again. We are praying about the right place, the right time. We're strategizing right now on a back to church plan as uh, things are hopefully, hopefully lifting. Um, and um, I'm just, I'm so grateful to God for today. I was telling my team before the service, I felt so heavy. And I think I can tell why now. Just God wanted to do so much uh, today that I believe he's done in your life. We have our encounter service coming up on the 29th of May. 29th of May. It's now at 12, 1 p.m. instead of 12 p.m. I believe it's online. 
it's a worship time, it's a time of encounter with the Lord, it's one of our life groups that will be running um, and, and when you call yourself encounter, well let's get ready for encounters with the Lord, let's get ready for encounters with the Spirit of God. I'm excited, I believe we're in the days of encounters, I believe the encounter that I had just two days ago was a precursor of God getting ready to do some amazing, amazing things in our lives. So God bless you all. Uh, remember to be with us on Wednesday for Bible study. This week, Wednesday, an anointed voice will be taking our Bible study. One of my own leaders will be powerfully, powerfully teaching in our Bible study this week. Her name is Pastor Fredita. She's going to be taking that. She works strongly in the realm of government. And I asked her, I said, would you release what God's putting in your spirit? She's also a very, very, very strong prophet. The majority of the, a lot of the words that I've received that have certainly thwarted certain things in my life, and especially in the area of warnings of things to come, have come through uh, Pastor Fredita. And so I'm so excited to hear what God's put in her spirit for this Wednesday's Bible study. So join us for midweek Bible study. She's going to shake some tables and it's going to be prolific and powerful. Make sure that you are there. But remember, be loved, believe, and be liked. God bless you like London. See you next week. Water. So powerful, but yet so calm. And sometimes that's how God meets us. In the middle of a storm, in a peaceful state. But sometimes, during the difficult times, He'll call you out into the deep. Will you sink, have to swim? But He's with you, waiting to see if you'll step out. Water. So powerful, but yet so calm. And sometimes that's how God meets us in the middle of a storm, in a peaceful state. Sometimes, during the difficult times, he'll call you out into the deep. Will you sink, have to swim? But he's with you, waiting to see if you'll step out. Water, so powerful, but yet so calm. And sometimes that's how God meets us, in the middle of a storm, in a peaceful state. But sometimes, during the difficult times, he'll call you out into the deep. Will you sink? have to swim, but he's with you, waiting to see if you'll step out.